I am a huge fan of classic console gaming, and so I am necessarily a huge fan of just about everything that Analog releases. If you're not familiar with the company, they produce obsessively high-end re-releases of classic consoles, most recently the Super NT for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System, the Mega SG for the Sega Genesis, and the Analog Pocket for the Game Boy and about a half a dozen other systems too. Now the company has turned its attention to something a little bit more niche. It's the Analog Duo, and it honors a system that, at least here in the US, never got much respect in the first place. Is this new high-def version worth your time 30-odd years later? I think it is, and if you're already a fan of the TurboGrafx-16, aka the PC Engine elsewhere in the world, rejoice because this is far and away the best way to play your Hue cards, your Turbo chips, and even your CD-based games too. Now a quick history lesson on the TurboGrafx-16, it released here in the US in 1989 following the huge success of the PC Engine that released in Japan in 1987. However, that two-year gap is crucial. Despite being advertised as a 16-bit console, the TurboGrafx-16 was actually an 8-bit system with some 16-bit graphics hardware on top, meaning that it was way ahead of its time in 1987, but by 1989 it was already looking dated. In Japan, the PC Engine beat the Sega Genesis and the Nintendo Super Famicom, aka the SNES, to the Japanese market and went on to become a huge success. Here in the US, the TurboGrafx-16 actually came out after the Sega Genesis hit the American market. And so it was the Genesis that would go on to be the big SNES competitor here, not the TurboGrafx-16. That lack of American success that means that the majority of the system's titles, of which there were hundreds, never came to the US, and since the Analog Duo plays Japanese titles just as well as it plays American ones, this is a great opportunity to sample some previously forbidden fruit. The Analog Duo looks a little bit like the TurboGrafx-16 here, but ultimately it is actually aping the PC Engine Duo, which released in the US as the Turbo Duo in the early 90s. The Duo looks a lot like the Analog system, which had an integrated CD-ROM drive into a single sleek unified device, much like the Analog, but this one feels a lot nicer. It has a heavy, solid feeling with good weight and even rubberized plastics. Let's take a quick tour around the console. Up front, of course, you have your cartridge slot here, as well as the CD-ROM slot. Output is on the back via an HDMI port here. You also have a couple of USB ports as well. And there's more output as well, a 3.5mm headphone jack on the side with a discrete volume knob if you want some private listening. You'll also find a port on the side here for wired controllers, but since this uses the smaller Japanese connector, not the larger American one, you'll have to use an adapter if you want to use your TurboGrafx-16 controllers. You'll also find an SD card reader on the back here for firmware updates or also for save games on CD-based titles, and here's the USB-C port through which the system gets its power. The heart of the system, though, is a dual-core ARM Cortex Field Programmable Gate Array FPGA chip, which can be effectively coded to act like any other processor. It's that core which enables the Duo to emulate the TurboGrafx-16, but I want to be perfectly clear here, this is not software emulation. There's none of the lag or glitchy performance that you might expect from PC-based emulators running ROMs that you downloaded from some forum somewhere. This is as close as you're going to get to a modern reboot of the various PC Engine systems, but with much cleaner output. Until now, without modding, your only way to get high-definition video out of a TurboGrafx-16 was to use something like an ugly adapter like this, which gives you RGB output, and then to run this through something like an OpenScan converter like this OSSC here. The results from these are typically good, but not great, because you're still taking an analog video signal and trying to convert that into a digital system. Throw that onto a big modern OLED display of the like, and the results are generally not that pretty. But the output from the Analog Duo is digital through and through, and every game looks fantastic. Well, almost every game. Now I ran through about a dozen games from my personal collection on the Analog Duo just to see how everything worked, and for the most part, everything was great. Whether you're sliding in hue cards or using CD-ROMs, games load promptly and they look fantastic. Castlevania Rondo of Blood is generally held to be the single greatest title ever released on the PC Engine. It came out on CD-ROM back in 1993 only in the Japanese market. It's actually held to be one of the greatest Castlevania games of all time too, and it lives up to its reputation. It plays amazingly well on the Duo, and it looks great, it loads quickly, and the CD-ROM drive here isn't nearly as loud as some of those early CD-ROM add-ons were back 30 years ago. Just about everything else I tried worked equally well, but there was one game that didn't. SCI, Special Criminal Investigation, is the sequel to Chase HQ and is one of my favorite games in the arcade. Not only letting me drive cool cars like the Nissan 300ZX Turbo, 
and also letting me shoot at criminals while doing so. This then was the first game I tried to play on the Duo, and when I did so, all I got was a white screen. It's the same white screen that the TurboGrafx-16 gives you when you try to play a Japanese imported game. So I tried manually setting the Duo to play games from the Japanese region exclusively, and lo and behold, everything worked great. This again was the only title that I tried which had a glitch. Everything else was auto-detected appropriately, recognized appropriately, and it shows up internally within the Duo's library, giving you a look at all the games you've been playing and how long you've been playing them, much like the one in the pocket as well. As you can tell, I'm generally a fan of the Duo, but there is one thing I don't like, and that's the controllers. They're provided by 8 Do like most of Analog's prior releases, and for $24.99, they are pretty good value. They're wireless, they have batteries built in, and they have an integrated home button that makes it easy to pull up the Analog system menu. But they just feel light and kind of flimsy, even more so than the original TurboGrafx-16 controllers, and that's not saying much. Worst of all, they charge over micro USB. It's 2024, but even Apple does USB-C now. Given the cost of the console, I would gladly pay a little bit more for controllers that match the quality of the system and the feel of the system itself. Controllers aside, I love everything about the Analog Duo. At $250, it's the most expensive Analog release in years, but for fans of the TurboGrafx-16, or anybody who missed out on all the PC Engine releases that never officially showed up outside of Japan, this is an amazing opportunity to expand your collections and play those games with graphical fidelity far beyond anything that was possible in the 1990s. The Duo has certainly given me more appreciation for those games that were never released here in the US, and ever more motivation to keep working on my Japanese studies. All right, that's what I think about the Analog Duo, but let us know down in the comments. Would you pay $250 for high quality playback of games like SCI, or would you rather stick with emulators and downloaded ROMs? Let us know in comments, like and subscribe, and as ever, check out ngadget.com for a whole lot more.